it's your boy, guess who, Lo Neal, and yours truly, The Drew. Jones. Oh my God. I you you just got, say that. No, 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 <laughs> I'm not gonna let you, I'm not gonna, I, wanna, I gotta keep mixing it up. Can't yeah. let you just get too keep comfortable. Me, keep me absolutely. Guessing, understandable. Absolutely. Well, man, this has been <laughs> absolutely amazing times. Me and Drew have been getting it in. The Drew Jones have been getting it in. We've been talking Warriors, we've been talking NFL. We're all over the place, yeah. A's, Giants. Today we're going to bubble that down memory lane again. Mm -hmm. Back to your career. And what we got today? Well, I want to talk about your time playing for the Tennessee Titans. That, I mean, that must have been a lot of fun going oh from Tampa Bay to Tennessee. And so I have to know, let's let's tell everybody, what's the Music City Miracle? Ooh, the Music City Miracle. Sit back and relax. Put on your headgear. I'm going to take you on a trip through the atmosphere. You don't need a spaceship. <laughs> I'm just going to use my microphone. Boom, waves in your face. Oh, there, it is. there it is. Oh, I got it rolling. I'm telling you, how about this? We're down by six. That's right. So a field goal's not going to win. Keep playing. We're playing against the Buffalo Bills in a wild card playoff game. We just come off a magnificent season. It's one, it's less than a minute left. They go down and they score a touchdown to go up by six. And we're like, man, a minute left. We are looking, our guys are hurt. We're like, ugh. Is this it? Is this the end of the Titans' reign? But not to our wonder and eyes should appear, but the Tennessee Titans ready to explode once again. And it was, so oh my God, so I'm a poet and I don't even know it, but imagine this. You've been playing at home. You're winning the game with less than a minute left. They drive down and they score a touchdown and you're down. And now you're looking up the clock and it says, 35 seconds left and you're like where are we at right now we have a play called the music city miracle that mm. changed we actually called it the music city no we before. actually call, we actually called it the home run throwback oh nice so because it happened in music tennessee yeah. in the music city mm -hmm. that's what they call it the music city you know miracle. exactly right. But we called it the home run throwback. We practice play every single week, every Friday, and we. Think, and how often did you actually play it before this, uh, before this game? Every, believe it or not, every single week on Friday we would play this play uh -huh. and just do it and think guys would laugh uh -huh. around. Yeah, ha ha, never going to happen. And all of a sudden, we're in that moment. And this play, particular play, at practice I'd catch it and I could throw it, and I could do a bunch of things. But I could do it. We didn't have pads on, so I could throw really well. Uh -huh. But I wore those big pads and big neck roll. This particular play, I go over to Frank Wycheck. I said, Frank, they're gonna kick the ball to me. I tell him that we already have the play set up where I catch the ball. I throw it over to Dyson. Dyson takes it on silent. They're build a wall. I told Frank, I said, I was gonna tell you, they're kicking this ball to me. Come get it. I didn't let the other people know. It's sort of like Paul Revere. Paul Revere, he got all the credit, but listen, my children, you should hear the Midnight Rider. Paul Revere was the 17th April, 75. Well, hardly a man is now alive who oh remember that famous day and year. <laughs> So you gotta realize, Paul Revere wouldn't have been able to tell him that the British was coming if he didn't have those horses. Right. So I knew where the horses were gonna be. I knew where my big boys were gonna be. I said, come get the ball, Frank. Man, I look at the clock, 35 seconds left. I'm looking up and the ball's kicked. And oh my God, what to my wonder and I should appear, but the ball coming to me, just like I thought out of the atmosphere. Oh, and I'm like, looking, okay. I put the arms in, I'm like, here it goes. And you just heard the crowd. I'm like, okay, come on, little. Arms in tight, catch the ball, don't fumble it. Boom, the ball's coming, and it seems like eternity, Drew, eternity. But I put my arms together, I bring the ball in, I take some steps, run a little bit, Frank's coming, I pitch it back to him. He takes a couple steps, he throws it back to, to Dyson. Uh-huh. Crank up the band. I remember that place getting, it was so quiet in there before before we before the end of that game, because everyone thought they were losing. Our fans, it was at home, the fans were so quiet. It was so quiet in there that I looked over in the corner, it was so quiet that I saw, I heard a mouse pissing on a sponge. That's how quiet it was. But when we caught that, and it went over to, to me, to, to, to Wycheck, to Dyson, mm -hmm. and you just heard that place. And I'm looking like, oh my God, and I make a block, and I'm like, can he make it? Can he make it? That place absolutely erupted. erupted. Mm -hmm. We win the game. The next week we beat Jacksonville, we go on Super Bowl, and then we lose by a yard. But it was, that was the most exciting play that I've been in. Dyson and me and Frank Wycheck, we signed only 3,000 authentic um, uh, uh, pictures of that, that iconic moment. Oh, wow. It was such an amazing moment. And it's interesting because Kevin Dyson was on the winning end of that. Mm -hmm. 
three weeks away to win the Super Bowl, he gets tackled from the one yard line and can't get in the end zone and we lose the Super Bowl to the Rams. Uh, so, but it was, that play was awesome. Yeah. Well, so you went to the Super Bowl and this season for you, you had a lot of accolades, you know, being voted all pro mid-season by Sports Illustrated, NFL's best blocking back. So tell me, why was this season so productive, so successful for you? Well, for me, coming to the NFL, we talked about the Saints. I think I've won less than 10 games there in my whole career there. From the New Orleans, I went to the Jets. The Jets, we won seven or eight games. From there, I went to Tampa Bay, we won eight games. So I, in my whole career, I never had a positive been on winning team. Mm-hmm. So you have to realize it was a situation where I've never been on a winning team. I could not wait to get the puffs. You got to realize four years with the Saints, one year with the Jets, mm-hmm. one year in, in Tampa, you know, Bay. Tampa Bay. Yeah. That's seven years of my career right. without ever making the playoffs. Mm. You so were hungry. I was so hungry to get the opportunity. So that was just a great year. And we opened the stadium. It's called the Delphia Stadium in Tennessee. That was the first year that the stadium was open. So mm-hmm. we did not lose one home game at that stadium. Oh, there you trivia. Go. So little that fun was fact. yeah, mm-hmm. so that was so much fun. Great season. Well, that's all my questions for you about the Titans. Do you have any one give me one memory that you have that's uh, that's your favorite from that season? Well, I'll tell you, just being around the men that I was able to meet and they're still important in my life, Eddie George. You know, the great, uh, the late past, of course, he's passed on now, but Steve McNair, mm-hmm. that team was so special that we got to play with the Jason Fist, the, you know, the different guys that Blaine Bishop, Mark Rob, all these guys that you got to play with, they were lasting memories that you have. We were, we were a family, we were a tough team. Those moments in Tennessee will forever be remembered. Just the first team in Nashville, the first professional team in Nashville, and the first year in our existence, we go to a Super Bowl. That was a moment. Alrighty. On to the next. Next video, we'll be talking about the Bengals. The Bongos. The I hate them.